Hello and welcome to today's episode of Checkpoint, an Alanza News magazine program that gives you more insight about politics, governance, business and the general well-being of the people. Our team brings to you the chairman of APC Akira in Kaduna State, Mr. Matei Maki Tomayashi. He talks about the fight for the soul of the APC in Kaduna State and how a first-class student wants to repeat the class. Happy viewing. Well, I think we, we need to go back to the history of how APC evolved and came into being. Uh, APC came into being as an amalgamation, as a fusion of three major political parties, AMPP, AC, and, and CPC. There was also a splinter group of ABGA, which was part of the amalgamation. And I think that some of these problems have arisen as a result of a number of factors, one of which is if we go back to the history of uh, a fusion of political parties in Nigeria, this, it has not been uh, an easy thing to at attain. But running up the 2015 elections, the three parties, MPP, ACN, and CPC, and uh, a faction of ABGA, were able to come together. What should have been done from the beginning was to uh, understand this ahead of time and the need to blend the parties into a cohesive family. Uh, because when you have people coming from uh, different, different cultures, different uh, traditions, and you come together, you want them to work as a team. There must be deliberate effort you know, to ensure that you build a cohesive team now that they have come together as one entity. This was not done. And I think this is a big, big, big problem. When people are still carrying their own luggages, their mindset remains the same. Then you will have a problem. They will be looking at, well, instead of looking at uh, an issue from a unified perspective, they will be looking at issues from the perspectives or the traditions which they come from. Secondly, uh, the issue of leadership is very, 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 very important. Uh, the party came into power on a platform that professes change. And it was, it was important that from the onset, all the constituents of the party at all levels, whether it is in the legislature or in the executive, understand that the principal mission, the philosophy of the party is to bring about fundamental change on the basis on which it sold itself to the electorate and it was so elected. We now have a situation whereby elected representatives of the party at various levels Many of them are acting out of con uh, consonance with the philosophy of change. And Kaduna is a very good example. And why you talk about bringing about fundamental change that uh, change the lives of the ordinary citizens, peasants, market women, youth, workers. You now have a government that is running entirely 160 degrees turn around anti-people policies. 
And so there's no way that a crisis will not erupt. Thirdly, those who are elected into, into office on the platform of the party, and partic particularly at governorship level, have completely emasculated the party and have turned it into instruments of what they want the party to do and not the party to function based on the policies on which it was, it was, uh, it was founded. Now, with this type of situation, there cannot be anything but crisis. Is that the governor has made up his mind. This is his government and this is his party. And he reserves the right to do whatever he wants to do. You will recall, you know, on a lighter, on a lighter note, he had said that anybody who was not happy with what he is doing should go to Kofena Hill and jump and commit suicide. We have not done so. Uh, at another meeting sometimes in May, in Giwa, a town hall meeting, he, he, he said, we are all ants, and that he has crushing boots, that he's going to crush us and wheelbarrow us to the dustbin and set fire. The ants are still, are still here, very much alive. But that is just by way of illustration to give you the mindset of the governor. And he still has, he has not relented. And very recently, uh, you know, when he called for a meeting at Mutla uh, Square, um, and he said he's, uh, he's, a, he's a fighter, fierce fighter. Yes. And like anybody who doubts his prowess to fight, that he has a story to tell, that he had fought two presidents of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. One, he has sent to the grave, and you go to his grave and ask him what happened. The other one, he sent him, sent him back to his village, and he is there lamenting and ruminating, agonizing on what happened to him. So, uh, as far as we are concerned, well, we think that this is the most indecent thing that any public officer would say that you fought a president and sent him to his grave and you are asking people to go to his grave and ask him how he felt and what happened that led him to his grave. Ridiculous. That shows you the level of desperation. This is somebody who is we are saying that I mean, there is nothing attractive, you know, in repeating the class. So what is the, why should he come and announce to the world with glee that the president has asked him to, you know, to contest? So is he saying that, uh, okay, he was even doubting himself that he cannot contest until the president asked him to contest. He is just looking for an alibi, but, and he shows how unfit, how unqualified he is you know, to be governor. No, 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 no. Buhari can lift his hand. Buhari can even place a ladder and lift him up. But that is not the decision. The decision rests with the people. Okay? Yes. So, it doesn't matter. Honestly, I don't see anyone. Nobody will quarrel with that. If he is lifted, you know, like a satellite, you know, and shown to the world that all oh, people of Kaduna State, here is their king, here is their governor. No, completely no. We will never, ever support Nasser. He is vicious, 
he has unleashed terror on our people, we will never ever support him. I will fight him. You can quote me. Wait and see. Wait and see. After Abraham, there was another prophet, isn't it? After Moses, there was another prophet, Elisha, and so many of them. I'm telling you, in the 23 local governments of this state, in each of these local governments, you can find a governorship material, not less than 50, in each of these local governments. Okay. So if we are to line up in terms of qualifying to be governor, Nasir will be at the tail end. You don't need to be a student of Harvard to go and invite businessmen. Huh? So there's nothing special about that. There's nothing special about that. He doesn't put him on any pedestal, you know, that he is, he is some wisdom. He is not. I wish, him, I wish him the best of luck. Yes, you know my people in Benin, my friends in Benin, they have some, there is one proverb they always say, which I like very much. Say, one day will be one day. Monkey go go market, he no go return. So, if leaders who are elected on platforms, turn around and mutilate those platforms in order to sustain themselves in power. I tell you, it is not sustainable. History has shown nobody can continue manipulating the same platforms that brought him into power. I do, I do, I do. APC has a lot of following, grassroots following. It is also true that the party is going through a crisis. We are studying the issue of the local government election as announced. And we will make our position very, very clear very soon.